Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster. And today is the first part in a new series telling the story about my new armour commission. But of course, before we talk about what's coming up, we need to have a look back. And so I'm wearing my current armour, the armour that I currently joust in. And I have been jousting in this armour for eight years. Uh, I've had parts of it for 12 years, but uh, um, jousting for eight. Now, the very first piece of this harness that I got was the leg armour. The leg armour is in the Italian style because 12 years ago, when I started collecting the parts of this harness, I thought that there were only two styles of armour. See, a lot of my research was from uh, pages like myarmory.com, which uh, um, were very good and for the time were very good as well. But uh, um, they didn't go into as much detail as we have nowadays. Most reenactment groups as well agreed that there were only really two types of 15th century armour, and that is Italian and German. I decided to go for the Italian armour because partially I liked it and partially because I thought it would be quite a bit cheaper um, than the extremely fluted and gold encrusted German armours that I had seen. Now, as time went on and after I had bought the leg armour and got used to it, I had discovered and through research discovered that there were more types of armour than previously thought. In fact, there were some that seemed to be a blend of both the German and the Italian style. So to get help, I decided that I would go to Toby Capwell. Toby Capwell is a jouster and a historian, and he is head of the Armours and Armour division at the Wallace Collection. As I definitely wanted to joust in this armour, I felt it was really important to get the advice of a jouster, someone who had already done it, and also someone who really, really knew their armour. So I went to Toby and I asked him for some advice on what kind of cuirass I could have that would go with my Italian legs while still being a little bit different to the classic Italian. He showed me this amazing painting of St Michael which had a really cool German style to it, while still having some aspects of Italian manufacture. This would go really well with my Italian leg harness. So I decided to go with that, but that didn't really answer all of my questions. You see, St. Michael is very often painted wearing a cloak, and so his cloak covers up his shoulders and most of his arm armour. I had to decide what I was going to do. I ended up choosing a simple German style and got Fred Ryle to make those. They had a rear brace, a cooter and a van brace. And I was thinking about what spaulders or pauldrons I should get. I decided to go for spaulders, but then came across something that I hadn't quite expected. I could find very little or no evidence of spaulders going over the top of rail braces. Rather, most of the spaulders that I could see seemed to be integrated into rail braces. And so I approached Matt Bailey, who had made my cuirass, and asked him to make me some spaulders based on ones from the Wallace collection. These are the ones that I'm wearing now. And they worked very well with the lower arms that Fred had made for me. However, that left me with my arms and then some rear braces that I was doing nothing with. I also really liked the rest of the arm harness that was in the Wallace collection. So I went to Roman Tereshenko and he made this cooter and van brace to go with Matt's spaulders. I also had to choose a helmet. Most of the time when we're talking about German we talk about salads but also in talking to Toby Capwell he showed me a load of evidence for German styles of armets which I hadn't previously seen. 
I went to Will West of English Plate Armoury and he made me a German style armette specially for jousting. Now it's not an exact copy of any individual piece but rather done in the style of several different pieces and adapted for jousting so that it would be extra safe. My gauntlets were made by a friend of mine called John Terrace and you've seen them in a previous video. I'm very happy with them, they gave an awful lot of articulation and they were suitable for both jousting and sword fighting. I added some mail parts to this, all from Kapapai Mail, and I had my full harness that I was able to joust in. So now I had a harness that worked, that I've jousted in, that I've fought in, that I'm able to wear for long periods of time without tiring too much. You do get pretty tired, you do end up burning a lot of calories while you're wearing this. So why am I now deciding to change it? Well, a couple of years ago, I was asked by Arnold from Chivalry Initiatique to go to France and joust represent England at a French castle. I absolutely loved going over there. It was great fun. It was my first time jousting internationally and the guys there were so friendly. Um, it was just an incredible weekend. Not only that, but I was asked by Stacy from Arundel Castle to go and joust and represent England for Arundel Castle in 2019. This was huge for me. It was absolutely amazing to be asked to represent England. And I, again, really, really enjoyed it. Being there for a whole week and surrounded by loads of people who share your passion is just absolutely amazing. And there were some incredible photos that you'll be seeing right now from Ben Van Kurt of Chaos Historical Media. Looking back on these two things that happened made me think that actually there is an issue with my harness. It might be a bit of a me being overly picky, but actually this kind of harness would probably not really be seen in England. I've started representing England at some international jousts. With Destria, whenever I joust, I'm an English knight, but I'm wearing an armour that comes from southern Germany. Twelve years ago, we thought that would be the case, that people in England would choose between an Italian harness or a German harness. But now we know enough to know that that tended not to happen. Most armour that we would see on an English battlefield would be either Italian in style, a, an export, or of the English style, something that wasn't really spoken about too much back then. Over a lot of thinking, I made up my mind and I decided that if I was going to continue as an English knight, as an English reenactor, I wanted to represent what an English knight would actually be wearing. And that meant I needed to commission a new harness. Commissioning a harness will always start with research. Back when I first started, it was a case of myarmory.com and the armor archive. And that was basically all that I had. But since then, Toby Capwell has released a book on English armour from the first half of the 15th century. I poured over that book as much as I possibly could and also searched the internet for videos about English armour. I came across a video that included Toby Capwell and Matt Easton talking about the Dennington harness. I absolutely loved the Dennington harness. Looking it up in the book, it was so interesting. There was some weird stuff going on, but it was still very, very clearly functional and English. The spaulders of the Dennington harness overlapped upwards. This was something that I thought would be really, really good to use in my harness, because while it is slightly rare in the 15th century, it's something that you see in the 16th century a lot in specialised jousting armour. Not only that, but it had lozenge-shaped bezigues. These are incredibly English and would go a long way to helping me represent an English gentleman on the battlefield and in a joust. He also had some wacky demigreaves, which I just thought were cool. 
but I wasn't too sure about everything to do with the Dennington harness. See, as an English armour from the first half of the 15th century, it was very likely to have enclosed creases. And while you can ride in enclosed creases, it's not the best thing to do. It also had loads of gilt work all over the armour, which seemed like it would probably put the price up quite a bit. So I started getting some quotes and talking to armourers about making some slight changes to the original harness in order to make it more useful for jousting and to keep the costs down for myself. Just before I pulled the trigger on commissioning the new harness, I decided that I'd speak to Toby Capwell again. He had been so helpful in the initial commission of this harness that I thought it would be good to just get his perspective on it um, just before I started the commission on the Dennington harness. And I must say, I'm extremely glad that I did because after about a 10 minute conversation with him, he had completely changed my mind. So there we have it, the first part in a new series about my new harness. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do leave a like, do share it with your friends that like similar stuff and uh, uh, do subscribe if you haven't already because there will be more of these videos coming out soon. Thank you very much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.